Quite a few people have asked me about the roadmap to learn AI engineering recently. Usually, after some discussion, I realize that they are quite a bit confused about how AI engineering fit with the typical machine learning landscape. AI engineering is indeed very different from other data-related skills. It's actually much closer to software engineering. In today's video, I'll show you my preferred resources to learn that skill as a beginner. Before we go on, let's lay down some definition. AI engineering is the process of building application with readily available foundational model. This is absolutely not what researchers at OpenAI or Anthropic are doing. It's closer to what folks at Cursor or Windsurf are doing. It's a very new and strange field. It's a closer to the software type of skill set, but requires sometimes very advanced knowledge about how financial models are built and operate. The AI engineering roadmap I usually recommend is one which starts with learning the tools in breadth. Once you know the landscape, you should expand your AI engineering skill set to real world projects, just like one would do to improve, let's say, front end or back end skills. After you have done enough projects to be confident about the tech involved, you should learn financial model in much greater depth so as to refine your techniques. First off, learn the tools. Here I say learn in breadth not understand in depth. It's very important to start, otherwise you're going to be absolutely overwhelmed. The course I consistently recommend to beginner to start is the AI engineering path from Scrimba, who are kindly sponsoring this video. I actually started my business relationship with them because of that course, <laughs> actually. <laughs> as I was looking for something that would be like maximally useful for beginner without being too overwhelming. This course is honestly one of the best because it doesn't fall into the trap of going too much in depth into any of the multitude of topic it covers, all the while actually covering the right topic. To do that, they actually partner with uh, other companies like Hugging Face, Longchain, and the likes in order to make each of the separate module in the course. So. If you want to go deeper into a specific topic, you can directly jump into the partner content straight afterward. The Scrimba course also centers the whole learning experience around the code and gets you actually set up to run real workflow, which for learning software based skill is the best way to go. This course, and to be frank, like all of AI engineering in general, is best suited for people with already some uh, software development experience. Scrimba cut down a lot of the stuff uh, you need to set up locally in order just to get started uh, by having the code runnable directly on the screen. However, you will be stitching code together in JavaScript locally for some of the module or set up configuration in some cloud or even download open source model and start to play with them uh, for some of the other modules. So being comfortable with these kind of type of technology um, is a plus. So let's check out the interface a bit just so to get an idea of what, uh, of what it is. So we have the course uh, over here and uh, usually how it works is that there's an overlay which is going to be like a video that is uh, uh, starting to play and then you see it's going to switch up to this code uh, thing. So this is actually uh, very smart because you can pause and start to code right away, right? And you see here this little thing, you just made a branch in the code, but <laughs> like it's midway through the explanation. It's really made to be interactive and keep you curious and keep you engaged uh, with the material. So once you're done, you can say either save this or discard. And if you discard, you can start back to where uh, you were you were doing. And then you have the instructor uh, talking to you right in here about like what's uh, what's going on. And at some point you see here, there's like a, a challenge. The cool thing is that in uh, all of these projects, you're actually doing the stuff for real. So on this case, you need to go on Hugging Face, and you need to set up your tokens, and you need to put them into your uh, environment here, HF token, so that you can actually call Hugging Face while uh, doing uh, this work. So it also gets you started with all sorts of tools that you need to stitch together in order to make it work. And it's fairly intuitive, like uh, here, there's um, there's nothing for you to set up. It, the, all the dependency, let's say, uh, Hugging Face, uh, in France is all already installed. So you don't have to worry about anything. You can download the whole code base. So over here, you could go over there and download a zip and then start to work on this on your own. And I suggest to you to do that after you're done with the course for some of the project so that you can really, I'll say it, um, master them from in and out. 
There are quite a few modules within that course which are very self-contained. Each module has usually like one or two mini projects you'll be completing to reinforce your knowledge uh, of the subject. So let's go through them. First off, we have a general introduction to AI engineering for people who have never prompted LM before. It's quite simple and make use of OpenAI API to illustrate various prompting techniques. Then we have the deployment module, which will make you deploy an AI project on Cloudflare and move some of the setup from the front end you did into the back end. It's quite nice. And if you have no cloud experience, it will give you a solid first glance at a typical workflow. Up to that point, all modules mainly use OpenAI. In the open source module, you will learn how to leverage a wide range of other models that are open on Hugging Face or that you can run locally with Olama. Running open source model require a bit more skills, but with how things are unfolding in the financial model front, I think it's a must. Next module is about embedding and vector databases, which are almost always present when you have a large amount of document in your project. Think about it as a way of augmenting the LM based system with similarity search over a large corpus of information, usually to build what we call retrieval augmented generation application or RAG for short. Even though the context window of model is growing right now, retrieval mechanisms are still going to be useful in most AI applications. Then the course go into the React framework for creating agents. Agents is a bit of a weird naming. I have a full video on that, but think about it as a system where you let the LM take a bit more decision than a simpler prompt output setup. Finally, the course goes into multimodality where image and text are available for you to send as input. There's a growing trend in released financial models, even the open source ones, to be multimodal from the start. Leveraging this new dimension is going to be more and more important going forward. The main benefit for this course is that like under 15, roughly 15 hours, you should have seen quite a lot of the element that compose AI engineering. Not necessarily in a lot of depth, but in enough breadth that you can go into the next step of the roadmap actually. By the way, check out the link in the description for a 20% off the annual subscription, which gives you access to that course and many other more software related things. Okay, once you know the tools, you should start expanding your skill set through projects. Here, which dimension you're going to expand your skills toward will greatly depend on your prior software knowledge. Screenbug gives you a head start here with the AI engineering pad because it forces you to do a few projects in the curriculum, like you, you have to do them to advance. Meaning that you can take one of these simple projects and you can start and modifying to explore various uh, elements of uh, that project uh, yourself. I feel that to start out, for uh, doing a project on your own it's the best because you don't get the blank slate problem of not knowing what to work on so take the code right of any of these projects the one that most interests you try to move it out of uh, the screen platform deploy the whole loop yourself from start to finish and add a few feature um, that you're going to plan that are related to ai tweak the system grow the project and functionalities here it doesn't have to be clean at all you just are trying to gain more agency uh, over the content. I also recommend this book. So uh, it's the LM Engineering Handbook, which is like one massive tutorial for a specific LM based project. It's gonna use uh, data that either you generated or somebody else that you generate. And then you're gonna try to make a LM system that can emulate how this person write. It's a pretty cool project. So uh, in this one, actually, it's much better if you already have a kind of an idea of all of the building block. It's going to go through them again, but um, I feel I felt that like the Scrimble course was a bit better for beginners. Here, it's assuming that you know already a lot of stuff. So you're in this case, in this particular project, you're going to touch a whole lot more into the ML ops side of uh, things. So by, what I mean by ML ops is machine learning operations. So when you're going to deploy the system, it's nice because it walks you through what a production like setup will look like for AI based application. If you want to sample a bit the book before uh, you purchase it or whatever, there's actually a blog post that I think is like a earlier version of the book, um, which is, is useful for you to get um, kind of a, an idea about uh, what's going on. So I'll link it in the description, but it use basically the same elements uh, as in the book. Once you get more comfortable building a few projects, now is the time to deepen your knowledge of financial models and AI engineering in general. Here, at this point, there are usually two choices to get better at AI engineering. Either you improve your software skills or your pure LM knowledge. Surprisingly, improving your software skills has a lot of benefits, even if your AI knowledge skills uh, stay the same. So. One of the best advanced book on AI engineering uh, is this one uh, by Chip. It's quite comprehensive and cut through a lot of the hype around um, AI and LM in general. So after understanding enough of the basic, this book will greatly accelerate your mastery over the, the field. I don't recommend it to start 
if you have no clue what's going on because I think it's gonna be a bit too theoretical uh, for you. But if you already went to like the Scrimba course to understand like how to make stuff and then this big project um, with the, the Helm handbook and then you actually did deploy a project in a rack system and stuff, when you're gonna read that, you're actually gonna have everything you did click a bit more in depth. It's actually the kind of book that you should study and digest slowly as it holds fundamental knowledge about how LM operate much more than most uh, tutorials. It actually remind me of um, designing uh, data intensive uh, applications. So with these, honestly, you should be more than ready to build AI powered application. Like if you ingest all of this, the, these three uh, pieces of content and you did study them for real, it's more than enough uh, for you to actually be building stuff. There are a whole lot more great resources that haven't yet been codified into book or courses. I linked some of them into the description. One of my favorite resources for like a bit more esoteric AI knowledge is Ugling Face. They usually put out very solid content. Uh, you should follow them closely. To conclude, don't forget like that this stuff is rapidly evolving uh, compared to the rest of the tech world. Even front end, it's evolving faster than that. But uh, in my view, like the fundamental skills are here to stay. So you should at some point schedule some time for yourself to uh, learn these things. It can really be overwhelming uh, because it touched on a lot of different field. So and you, you, no matter where you come from, even if you come from a machine learning background or from a front end, a full stack background, you always feel like you're, you don't have enough of the basics to understand what's going on, uh, but that's normal. So the best way to grasp this field is to always stay as pragmatic as possible while you're studying the material. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like if it was the case and leave a comment if you have any question. Uh, I'm here to help. Have a great week, everyone, and see you in the next video.